Sunday School Lesson for April the 12th, 2015, Lesson 7. We are still studying from Unit 2, The Community of Beloved Disciples. The Community of Beloved Disciples. When we look at this word, community, we're thinking about a group of people who reside in a specific location. And here we are talking about the universe. Uh, all Christians, born again believers, are to share in this community. And we are to be governed by the same rules and regulation. And uh, no matter where you are and uh, what country you live in, this community is the born again believers who make up the church, the body of Christ. We also want to remember that in this community, uh, it is not a segregated community, but it is a very discriminating community. And you say, well, what do you mean by that? In this community, it is whosoever will. Okay, but in order to be a part of this community, you must be born again. Okay. And therefore, there are no unsaved peoples in this community that this lesson is dealing with. And then we have uh, the subject says, uh, uh, Beloved Disciples. Now this word beloved means that here we are, are dearly beloved. A love in a special way. This love is uh, coming from the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then it says, um, uh, beloved disciples. Okay, now we know that the word disciple means that a follower and a learner uh, got to be a learner uh, before you can be a follower. So uh, here in this community, we are learning and we are putting into practice, okay, how to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, then we have uh, a subject says, that uh, we uh, all need love. Everyone in this community, okay, of believers, we need love. Now, this lesson is going to deal with uh, a lot about love. Therefore, we must have a definition for love, okay? And I'm going to give uh, my definition for love, and, uh, and I'm going to repeat it at the end, okay, of the lesson. Uh, Love is uh, uh, known as the three D's. Uh, have a desire for someone. Love is denial of uh, uh, self for someone else. Well, let me repeat that. Uh, the three D's of love is uh, have a desire for one, to have a delight in someone, the denial of self for the good of somebody else. Now, I'm so glad that our lesson committee okay, uh, 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 assigned this lesson for us after uh, last week uh, dealing with the resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that uh, what he went through, he did it because of love for mankind. And the same type of love that he demonstrated for, for mankind, okay, he didn't die for himself, but he died for the good of somebody else. We're going to see this in the 16th verse of this lesson. Okay, so in this uh, uh, community, we should have the same type of love one for another. Now, it's been said by someone, the author is unknown, that uh, to live is to love, to love is to live, to live without love is no life to live. Think about that. Now, uh, our lesson is taken from, okay, the uh, uh, First John, the... Uh, third chapter, verses 11 through 24. But we encourage you to read the devotional reading, which is taken from the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter, verses 31 through 35. Very important. Okay. And uh, uh, the key verse of our lesson, well, first let's look at the aim for the lesson. It says, uh, there are three aims from the adult quarterly. Okay. Understand John's message about loving one another. Understand John's message about loving one another. Now, uh, 
uh, like I say, when we talk about love, this is the type of love that uh, should always be going out, okay, to others, whether it is returning or not. But in this family, or this community, it should be reciprocated, going out and coming back, okay. But even if it is not reciprocated, coming back, we are commanded to still love others, okay. And look at the Lord Jesus Christ, okay. Uh, they didn't love him. But he died for the sins of the entire world. Okay. And uh, then number two. Affirm the fundamental uh, discipleship. Okay. Principle of love for God and others. The essential part. Okay. Affirming of the love for God and for others. Okay. Now we're going to see that he set the example. Okay. From the uh, uh, Gospel of John. Uh, uh, 13th chapter, verses 34 and 35. we talk about that later. Okay, then uh, number three, express unconditional love to others. Okay, express unconditional love to others. Okay, unconditional means that uh, you are not looking for anything in return. You are doing this because you want to live a Christ-like life, okay, of love for others. Okay, now, uh, as we study the, the, the uh, uh, this writing of Third John here in the uh, epistle, uh, we want you to pay close attention to the words that John used here with the uh, suffix of E-T-H on the end, okay? Uh, you're going to see this more in John's writing than any other book in the Bible, E-T-H which means uh, habitually, okay, continually, okay, and uh, these uh, words mean so important. Now, uh, we want you to uh, go back and read the devotional part of our lesson from the Gospel of John, verses 34 and 5, where uh, the Lord says, uh, talking to his disciples, the uh, last night uh, here on earth, he's going to leave the upper room now, go out in the garden of Gethsemane in the 18th chapter and, and be arrested, okay, and then he's going to uh, uh, die the next evening. But here he's giving them some last instruction, and it says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And by this all men, are saved and unsaved, will know that you are my disciple, you are learning to follow me. Why? Because you have love one for another. Now I want you to uh, uh, look in your uh, Greek concordance and look up that word commandment, okay, there. And it's going to be the same Greek word throughout the gospel, the, uh, throughout the epistle of John, in particular our lesson, commandment. Now that word commandment uh, in the Greek means a, uh, an authoritative prescription. Commandment. I give you a uh, new commandment. Uh, I'm going to write you uh, a, a new prescription. I have the authority. And this is the reason why I love to study the King James Bible. Because the King James makes you go back to the Greek concordance and see what these words meant in the original Greek. So here, the Lord is saying, now under the law, the uh, law says that, uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and I shall love the Lord with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. Now the law demanded love, but the law, and the law is perfect, but the law didn't give any help to love. Under grace, grace give us a uh, uh, demanded uh, love, but grace give us uh, uh, help through the power of the Holy Spirit to love. Okay? The law didn't give you any help. The law is perfect. And, uh, but you love as uh, your neighbor as yourself. But here, the Lord is saying that he has set the example of love in a day of grace. Okay, now, just like you, uh, a person go to medical school and, uh, and uh, become a medical doctor and uh, they uh, become uh, uh, able to write prescription, okay, and uh, give you instruction how to take that prescription. And, uh, uh, but when the Lord write a prescription, okay, he never have to change it. Okay, all you have to do is follow the direction as to the Holy Spirit fill it. And, uh, and this uh, instruction says, love one another as I have loved you. Okay, and by this, 
uh, all people know that you are my disciples, okay? And uh, why? Because you have unconditional love one for another. Very important to understand that what this new commandment is, okay? And uh, so our lesson is, uh, is uh, print began with the uh, 11th verse of the uh, first John, okay, uh, the third chapter, and verses 11 through 24. Now, uh, from your adult quarterly, we want you to read the background content of the uh, of the uh, lesson, and uh, but then when we get to the print, okay, verses uh, uh, 11 through 15, and from your adult quarterly, they say, Love, the test of abiding in Christ. The test, okay? Now, uh, uh, abiding in, and uh, we want you to remember that uh, now he's talking to Krishna, and uh, some people use this to teach that you can lose your salvation, but this is not what the Word of God is saying because uh, the same John that wrote the, the, the epistle, he wrote the gospel, and one thing that in, in the Apostle Paul writing all, your salvation is secure, you cannot lose it, but the Word of God uh, should be abiding, living in, those that are living in this community, okay, of beloved disciples, okay. Now, sometimes the Word of God is not uh, living in us, okay. We do things that we should not be doing, okay, but we have the Holy Spirit, and we're going to see that the Spirit of God convicts us, okay, <laughs> when we are doing things contrary to the Word of God. So, therefore, the prince say, for this is the message, that we heard from the beginning that we should love one another. <laughs> now, notice that word, we, uh, Christians. As we study this lesson, we want you to understand that this we is uh, uh, transcends all demarcation lines. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference what color you are, okay, who you know, uh, uh, how much money you have, how much where you live, or anything like that. We as Christians, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, and God is no respecter of person. We have heard, okay, the message from the beginning that we should, now underline that word should, love one another, okay, have a desire for one another, have the light in one another, Willing to deny self <coughs> for the good of somebody else. And uh, then he used an example. Not as Cain. And remember, uh, go back to the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. And uh, 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 who was off that wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own work was evil and his brother was righteous. Okay, now. They was biological brothers, same mother and father. But yet and still, uh, 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 Cain killed Abel, his brother, okay? And Cain was off that wicked one. And uh, he slew him, and he was jealous of him, okay? All because uh, Abel uh, was done things righteous, according to the word of God. And uh, his brother Cain was motivated by Satan. He was jealous of him. Now, he is setting an example that in the family of God, okay, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And therefore, there is no place for uh, uh, jealousy, <coughs> uh, envy, strife, and division. Uh, love is not, okay, the author of uh, any type of division and hatred. I want you to be aware of Romans uh, 9, uh, 12, 9, let love be without dissimulation, hypocrisy, phony, okay? The body of Christ, the church, in this community, there is no place for Hollywood love. You see, what is Hollywood love? Play acting on a stage, okay? And they can make it so real, but when they leave the stage, okay, some of them don't even know how to speak to each other when you read about them, until it's rehearsal time. So therefore, we in the family of God, there's no place for Hollywood love. I want you to read the 13th chapter of, uh, of uh, Romans, 
because we find there that love is a debt that you would never pay off. Okay, as long as we are in this world, we should be exemplifying love, true love for one another. And then it tells us in there that love is the fulfillment of the law. Okay, you cannot say you love me, and they say work no evil to his neighbor. You cannot say you love me and stabbing me in the back at the same time, throwing a brick and hiding your hand. Okay, and then when you uh, approach, you find out what is going on, and you approach, and they try to lie their way out of it. Okay, so therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Okay, and uh, here, and then the next verse says that uh, marvels not, my brethren. Don't be surprised if the world hates you, just like uh, 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 Cain hated his brother. Don't you be surprised when uh, the world, the unsaved people who are motivated by Satan, who is the prince and the power of their Satan is anti-God. And Satan is, uh, uh, is, uh, do not want people to acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, the Messiah, the one who is going to put him out of commission. So therefore, Satan hates the Christian for doing the work of the Lord. I never forget, okay, years ago when the Lord first called me to preach his word, and it seemed like Satan got on my trail, and I was having a problem on the job, problem in the home, a uh, uh, problem just, uh, just seeing a mountain up on me. And uh, so I went to prayer meeting one morning, Sunday morning, and one of the elderly deacons, a uh, very uh, uh, strong man in the faith, a lot of wisdom, and he looked at me and said, What's wrong with you, boy? And I said, Brother... Uh, uh, nothing right. And he said, what's wrong? So I went to tell him about the thing, and he listened, and he didn't say what I expected him to say. So his advice was, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, you say you have been called a preacher, now you're out here trying to tear down Satan's stronghold, and don't you think he's not going to fight back? He said, if I'm in my house and you're trying to tear my house do down, and I don't fight back, I'm not much of a man. He said, but Satan is on his job, and you better be on yours. So, uh, and I never will forget that, okay? Satan hates, okay, those of us who are representing God. We're trying to tear down his stronghold. So he said, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. The is motivated by Satan. He's the person in power there. And then the 14th verse said, we know that we have passed from spiritual death to spiritual life. Why? Because we love the brethren. Now, uh, in order for us to love the brethren, okay, now you have to do this to the power of the Holy Spirit, okay? And it is the Spirit of God that give us this power, okay? Then he said, he that loveth not his brethren abideth in death, okay? He that loveth not his brethren. Now, uh, when you read the uh, teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, Okay, the Lord says that uh, you really you don't have to commit the act, okay, but it's what's in your heart, okay. So therefore, if the Word of God is abiding, is alive in you, okay, then you know that you have passed from spiritual death to spiritual life. Read uh, the Gospel of John, uh, the fifth chapter, verses 24 and 5. Those who, uh, that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, they are walking around physically alive, but spiritually dead. But when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, then God places His Spirit in us, then we become spiritually alive. And then when we allow the Word of God to abide, to be alive in us, then we can live in this community as we are directed by the word of God. Okay. Then it says, Whosoever hateth his brother. Now notice the word we told you to be always cognizant of the ETH. Hateth habitually, continually his brother. Is a murderer. You don't have to commit the act. Okay. God knows what's in your heart. And he and he know that no murder has eternal life abiding, living, okay, in him. The test of abiding 
in Christ. Now, as we study here, Third John, uh, uh, we want to learn how to do some self-examination. Okay, and as I say many times, when we examine ourselves, don't give yourself a high grade uh, when you know you should be giving yourself a, a F. Okay, be honest. God knows. Okay. If you don't see yourself the way you are, okay, then you cannot be helped. When we see ourselves as God sees us, okay, and that is when we can be helped, okay, if we allow the Word of God to have a way in our lives. Then we see uh, the next part of our lesson is taken from, okay, John the 13th chapter, third, first John the 3rd chapter, verses 16 through 18. Love. The test of genuine compassion. The test of genuine compassion. Love. Now we want to understand what this word compassion means. Okay. Uh, Passion. In this word compassion, there is sympathy and there is pity. But sympathy, compassion, is more than uh, uh, sympathy and uh, 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 having pity. Compassion make you do something if you can to relieve a person that is having problem. Okay, sometimes you cannot uh, uh, do things to help them. Only thing then you could do is pray for them and have sympathy and uh, pity for them. But compassion, if a person is having some problem, and you have the ability to relieve them of that problem, that is compassion. But if you have the ability and fail to do so, then you are not showing love towards those people. Okay? So look, look what the Word of God said, what John wrote. Hereby perceive we, know we, the love of God, because He laid down His life for us. And we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. Okay? He laid down His life. What were we studying about last weekend? Okay? How Jesus Christ came into this world, took seven steps down in humiliation, died a, a, a excruciating death on that cross, not because of himself, but all because he loved us. We had a sin debt we couldn't pay, okay? We couldn't help ourselves, but he paid it all. We find in the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, uh, tolerated, put up with it. Okay, despising the shame. Died for us. And then went back to heaven. Now he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And do it. We perceive the love of God because he laid down his life. Okay, he loved us so. Those, remember what they say, those three D's? It had a desire for mankind. It had a delight in mankind. Willing to uh, uh, deny self for the good of somebody else. Then it says, uh, But whosoever had this world good, and sees his brother, okay, notice that uh, sees his brother, ha- uh, have needs, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Seeing his brother in need. You, ha- you have what they need. Okay? But you set up your innermost part, your heart, not the... Uh, 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 a device that pump and blood throughout your circulatory system, but your bowels of compassion, your innermost part, you shut it up. And you do not give them the thing that they need, you have it. You don't have compassion. Then how can you see that the, that, uh, the love of God dwelleth in you? Okay. The love of God, being led by the Holy Spirit, going to compel you to do what you can to relieve your brothers and sisters in this community. Look what we have in, uh, in uh, Galatia uh, 16. As we have therefore the opportunity, uh, let us do good to all men, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Many times in my teaching, I, I, I use that verse, and I asked the class, if you have one coat, and the wintertime, really cold outside. And there are two people who really need that coat. 
One is a saved person and the other one is unsaved. Who get the coat? Okay. And some will say the uh, unsaved. And uh, some will say the saved. But notice what the scripture says. Let us do good to all and especially to those who are the household of faith. You see, uh, uh, God, uh, uh, when God created the nation Israel, he created them for uh, three purpose, main purpose. One was to provide the bloodline for the Savior. And the other one was to preserve the word of God. And the other one was to uh, live a life that, uh, uh, and because they was to represent, okay, uh, their God to the heathen uh, uh, around them. And one way that they were to represent is the way they treated one another. When you read the Old Testament and how the Jew were to treat one another. And what the way they treat one another, that would make some of those heathen want to be a part of their God. And then uh, they would entice them to be postulated into Judaism under the law. But in this day of grace, we who are uh, living in this community, we have the responsibility to treat each other in a way that when the world looks at us, they can see how much we love one another, and this will make them want to be a part of us if we are living like we should. i never forget. About uh, 30 years ago, uh, on my job, a, uh, a fellow came to me. He was an unsaved person. And uh, a very, um, he, was, he lived a, a good moral life, but he just didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he asked me one night on his job, I'm strong. Do the white and black Christian read the same Bible and worship the same God? And I looked at him and I said, yes, why are you asking that question? He said, because he on the job, I noticed that the black and white Christian don't have anything good to say about each other. And I looked at him, you know, and uh, that was a sad commentary. And since this unsaved people, person made that statement, why should he want to be a part of us? Okay. When he just said that the black and white Christian uh, don't have anything good to say. But see, all the secular always tearing one another down. But go back to uh, this community. In this community of faith, okay, God does not see any black Christian, white Christian. God sees all that is born into his family. We got to stop making distinction, okay? Not only between the black and white Christian, sometimes we make a distinction even between the black Christian, our own black Christian. And the way we talked about one another sometimes, the world cannot understand, okay? How can y'all say y'all love one another? And why should I want to be a part of this? Because I see the same thing out in this world. Love one another, Okay? Then it says that, uh, uh, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. We can make our tongue say anything. Okay? Do you know that uh, uh, the things that we do mean more than the things that we say? Okay? The things that we do. Sometimes, I'm going to say this with love, sometimes, some of us preachers, we can get in the poor pit and we can always talk about love, y'all love, y'all love, y'all are not loving like you should. And we never put the emphasis on, we are not doing what, okay, do it. And sometimes that same person is uh, showing so much envy, strife, and division in the church, as, and he's the leader. And I wonder sometimes, who wrote your manuscript? Because you do not demonstrate. Okay? Some of us, we're just guilty. We need to do some self-examination. And then we can sing, It's me, it's me, O Lord. And I'm standing in the need of prayer. Okay? Stop passing the blame. Okay? My little children. Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Be sincere. 
You can fool some of the people sometime, but you cannot fool everybody all the time, but you cannot fool God any time. He knows. He, the Lord is omniscient, friend. He knows whether we are lying or not. Is it possible to demonstrate love for another without being in a relationship with that person? Yes, it is. Okay. By the way we treat others. Okay. If so, how? By the way we treat others. By the way we conduct ourselves. By the way, when we wear this word a Christian and a disciple, if we are a disciple, then we are a learner and a follower. We are put into practice the thing that we have learned. Remember the Lord said he was going to send us another comforter, okay, and he was going to be in us. He was going to be along beside us. He was going to teach us, and he was going to bring things back to our remembrance. And my friends, if we don't allow, do not allow him to teach us, there is nothing for him but to bring back to our remembering. And we certainly cannot put it into practice. There are certain things we know we shouldn't do. Okay? But as far as uh, being a, 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 a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to study his word. Too many of us have in a leadership capacity. We don't go to any Bible study. We might read the word of God, but we don't go to the Bible study to learn how to rightly divide it. Okay, then look at the last part of our lesson, okay, uh, taken from uh, the third chapter, verses 19 through 24. Love, gracious by a uh, 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 product, gracious by what we do. Notice this closely from the King James Version. And hereby we know that we are of the truth. The truth is the word of God. And shall uh, assure our heart before him. Okay. And the uh, NIV say we know that our heart is at rest in his presence. Is your heart at rest in the presence of God? Are you confident? If our hearts condemn us. The innermost parts condemn us. God is greater than our heart. And knows all things. Notice it knoweth. Okay. He knew all things. You cannot fool God. Read the 139th Psalm. He knows your thoughts are far off. He knows what you're going to be thinking tomorrow and next year at this very time. He knows. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. Okay. If our heart condemn us not, then we have boldness, okay, that we can go directly to the throne of God. Our heart, our conscience, okay, tell us that we are doing wrong, okay. When our hearts condemn us, then we can turn to him like a little child turning to his father. Look at the Gospel of John one twelve. He is the one who knows all things. And that person can receive help and comfort from him because he knows and he will forgive if need be. Then the uh, 21st verse says, uh, 22nd verse says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Why? Because we keep his commandment. We take that prescription that he has written. And we take it according to his instruction. Love one another as I have loved you. Because we keep his commandment. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Don't ever think. That when you go contrary to the word of God. Don't ever think that you are doing things that is pleasing in his sight. He came into this world. He suffered and died. He gave us uh, eternal life. Placed his spirit in us. The spirit is our source of power. Remember what uh, Paul wrote in the book of Galatia, the fifth chapter. The fruit of the spirit is love. Agape love. And when we have this type of love, 
the Spirit of God will produce love. Later told me once that I can't love like that. And I told her I cannot either of myself. But God has given us His Holy Spirit. And His Holy Spirit is our source of power. And we have to learn how to use the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Then we can see, like He said in the book of Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can't do it of myself. And then... Uh, uh, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Why? Because we keep his commandment and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is the commandment, that we, uh, that we sh uh, should believe on the name of the Son of, uh, for his Son, Jesus Christ, who love uh, and love one another as he gave us commandment. When we do this, then the Word of God is alive. It is abiding in us. And we are abiding in the Word. Okay? And he that keepeth his commandment. Abideth, no that ETH in him. And he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the Spirit which he had given us. You know. You know whether you, the Word of God is alive in you or not. And you know whether you are alive in the Word by the Spirit. The Spirit of God convicts us. The Spirit of God is not going to make you do anything, but it's going to let you know when you're wrong. Then we got to use First John 1, 9. Okay? Confess our sin with a contrite heart. And God is faithful and just to forgive us. But remember what he tell us in Psalm 66, 18. If I harbor iniquity in my heart, God will not even hear us. We got to be sincere. In this community of faith, the love should be going out at all times. Unconditional love. Even if it's not reciprocated. Okay, coming back. We must love one another. Keep in mind what I said in the beginning. Love is to have a desire for someone. Love is to have a delight in someone. Love is a denial of self for the good of somebody else. To live is to love. To love is to live. To live without love is no life to live. Wonderful thoughts. After we have celebrated the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. May God bless you, may he keep you, and we hope to see you in Sunday school Sunday morning.